Hi, I'm Steve Miller, and I've been an underwater photographer upwards of 45 years now, and I've done a lot of traveling to some of the top destinations in the world, shooting everything from big animals to uh, super macro. And this is my bag. And I should say that my bag is gonna change for every trip. Ideally, I'd love to throw all my stuff into a bag and take it with me, but I would need 10 of these cases, so that's not an option. So what you're looking at here is gonna be my essentials, my favorites for right now. So starting with the camera, the camera that I like to shoot is the R10, Canon R10. This is a mirrorless camera, and with the adapter, I can use all of my Canon EF lenses. In this case, my favorite wide angle, which is the Tokina 10 to 17 millimeter fisheye. Beautiful lens. I've used this exact lens on 15 different cameras over the years. So I'm obviously uh, a big fan of it. So the R10 is going to be my underwater camera dedicated. And along, along with that, I'll have my wide lens. I'll have the 18 to 45 kit lens. This is a very bright lens, good for all around fish portraits. And then if I plan on shooting macro, I'll also take a flat port and a macro lens with me. I also like to carry a second camera body with me, even if I don't carry a bunch of extra lenses. And the reason for this is that when I put my system together, I want to be able to go to bed and have this thing ready to go the next morning. So I just grab it. It's under pressure. The batteries are charged. There's plenty of room on the card and I just go. Now what I find is I want it to be that way. So therefore, if I don't take a second camera body, I don't shoot around the resort or around the boat or do any astro or night photography. Uh, so if you got one, a uh, second camera body is not a bad choice to bring along with you. Um, and if you don't, uh, an alternative would be to get something small like the Olympus TG6. Uh, this is a great knock around camera for when you're not uh, doing your serious dives. Okay, talking about the housing now, this is the housing for the R10. And as you can see, compared to a lot of housings, this thing is very small, very light. It's one of the things I love about it. Now, I have the small dome on here, which works great with my wide angle lenses. But depending on the trip, if I expect to shoot a lot of over-unders, I'll also take the big dome with me, the eight inch dome. It's a little easier to control the water line when you're using a big dome just because it's so much bigger. The uh, handle assembly, this is a dual handle assembly for the housing, highly recommended. When you go to pass this up to somebody in a boat, they've got something to grab onto. So you can do no handles or one handle. I prefer two. Also, the two handles are gonna accommodate my lights. For lights, I'm using DS-230. These are the newest strobes for Mike Light. These are the most powerful and fastest flashes on the market right now. We always like to use two, just for more balanced light lighting. So I'll typically either use both of these uh, or leave the lights behind altogether and shoot natural light. From there, of course, these are the arms that are going to attach to the housing, attach the lights to your housings. And these are our newest knuckles. They're a lot smoother and a lot tighter uh, than some of the knuckles we've, that we've uh, used over the years. So two arms, one for each strobe. By the way, these are pretty much indestructible. So if you're looking for something to throw into your dive bag, get a little weight out of this or in your carry-on, these arms, uh, they pretty much can't be hurt. The rest of this gear, you're going to want to pack with padding between it so that there are no too hard or a glass and a hard surface, surface that are actually in contact with each other. Imagine this bag taking a hit from three or four feet as, as it falls off of the, uh, the belt at the airport. That's what you want your stuff to be able to survive. And that's one of the advantages of using a case like this. Other standard things to always have with you, the vacuum pump big believer in drawing a vacuum on your housing. And I even like to do this the night before so that I know in the morning, I see that that thing's still holding pressure. I know that my housing's waterproof. Um, of course, chargers, chargers for the strobe, chargers for all of your parts and pieces. And again, these are things that you might need to move around to other bags because the goal is to keep this bag finished uh, just under 50 pounds. Cords, of course, you're gonna need a dual cord for the two strobes and a uh, big fan of the TTL converter. Over the years, TTL, like lights, TTL circuitry has been in 99% of my underwater photographs. I always 
put it on TTL. Shoot the camera on manual, but the TTL works beautifully for the flash. So you need your dual cord. And then I always, and most people do, will carry a second cord. I've never had one fail in 20 years, but if it did, you wouldn't be able to use your strobe. So carrying a, a spare dual cord is not the worst idea. Other optional accessories uh, that I like. One is the carry handle. This goes across your two strobe arms, makes it a lot easier to carry your system to and from the boat or to and from the beach or through the surf or whatever. So the carry handle is a essential feature. As far as filters, I don't use a lot. I don't use any for underwater, but for topside, it's nice to have a variable density filter and also a circular polarizer. It's great for clouds, ocean, uh, for seeing through the water and seeing the reef when you're shooting from the boat, uh, for example. Always like to have a little tripod with me just because it's so easy to pack. Depending on the trip, I might take a full-size tripod as well, but that's um, obviously a challenge to travel with. From there, this is a little known accessory, but I'm, I'm a big fan of this. This is the 45 degree viewfinder. It's a magnifying viewfinder. I travel with it off of the housing because it protrudes, uh, but it takes about one minute to just basically thread this into the back of the housing. When you use this, what happens is it's magnified and it's calibrated to your eye via when you made the adjustment when your camera was new. When you're using this, when you look through this lens, you're gonna see corner to corner. You're gonna see your entire frame. And if you're shooting a mirrorless, like the R10, you can even preview your images through here. Why is this so good? When you're in a sunlit reef and you go to look at the preview screen on your, on your camera through the housing, when sunlight hits it, it's gonna be washed out. You're not gonna be able to see much at all. But when you look through this, your head comes over, your mask goes tight against it, you see corner to corner and it's totally shaded. So it's big and it's bright and you can actually look at all the, just the smallest details of the frames that you just shot, as well as the frames that you're about to shoot uh, when you're composing. So 45 degree viewfinder, I'm a big fan of that. And then of course, everybody's gonna carry a spare, spare parts kit. You should have some basic tools in here, Phillips head, flathead, a little Allen wrench for uh, removing the, the ports. Uh, the shroud around the port, some spare cords, O-rings, specialty tools. It's nice to have a clear case like this that you can see inside it. So this whole system packed up would be my bag. Thanks.